So, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Pastor. And a very sincere word of welcome to you this morning on this very special day, Pentecost Sunday. It's a very special day in that it's a day that the church was born. And so we welcome everyone who is listening to this service online with us and for tuning in. And we, we trust that this service is going to be a blessing to you and to all gathered here today. We're also very thrilled to see as we look at the world news of the ceasefire that's taking place in the Middle East. We know this has been the prayer of many churches and governments have tried to, to work in this situation where countless lives have been taken, innocent people dying and children especially not even given a chance in life. And uh, we, we are just so thrilled today and thank God for that intervention. May, continue, may God continue to, to bless those who are looking at trying to make this a permanent thing. You know, it seems to flare up. It's been flaring up right back in biblical times. So, so just trust that God will get these people together now and make some kind of truce that lost a uh, solution to the crisis. And folks, this, this time, uh, the time has come for me to retire. Uh, from active ministry, uh, so this will be my last broadcast service from the Glasshouse Country Uniting Church. Blessings to you as you continue your spiritual journey. We hope to resume this uh, service once we have a permanent minister here at Glasshouse and we will, we will let our folks and friends know. And so today is Pentecost Sunday, the day that the church was born. Let us join together in worship. And now the greeting. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. God is with us. We are not alone. And now an acknowledgement to country. As we gather, we acknowledge that we meet on the traditional land of the Gabi Gabi people and all the neighboring generations and peoples and recognize that this land continues to be sacred to them. We continue to pray for a deeper reconciliation between the first peoples and those who came later and our hope that we can move to a place of justice and partnership together. And now the call to worship and the call to worship that we're going to be using today comes from the First Presbyterian Church of West Seneca and I thought it's a very helpful one on Pentecost Sunday. Do not give easy or unthinking response to this day's call to worship. For today we ask God's Spirit to fill us that we may prophesy and dream dreams and see visions. The call to worship today is summons is a summons to be touched by holy fire. Even now the flames may dance above our heads, igniting our opinions on peacemaking so that they blaze into commitment. Even now the flames may be burning into our hearts, animating us, leaving us no p peace as individuals until God's justice and peace fill the earth as the waters fill the seas. Prophets, visionaries, dreamers, let us worship with courage and with hope. And so let us worship God. Now let us pray. O oh God, our loving Heavenly Father, we praise you this day for the power of the Holy Spirit. Ignite within us a fiery passion for your mission in the world today. Warm us by the Spirit's dancing tongues of flame, that we may feel your kindling blaze within, urging us to do your greater good. Lord, make us wholly present to experience a new birth and awaken possibilities within us to share your love in the world. In this love and abundance, we come to celebrate your harvest 
a harvest bearing the first fruits of the Spirit within us. Show us how to use these gifts as we listen to your truth in the gentle breeze of your Spirit. Now we turn to God in prayer, not because we are compelled, but because God invites us. We come to God not because of our righteousness, but because of God's grace in that spirit. And so we bring this prayer of confession and unburdening. Prayer of confession. Loving God, we know that in every generation you call forth prophets to proclaim your word. We give you thanks that you are still speaking even today. Your spirit inspires the young to see visions of a new creation and elders to dream of a time not yet known. Yet we confess that we fail to hear your voice when it comes from an unexpected place. Convinced that we are right, we miss the good news of your reconciling love. Forgive us, O oh God. Restore us with humility and awaken us anew to your presence and your promise. Amen. Amen. And now assurance of pardon. The God of creation is a God of mercy. God is quick to forgive. And God's promise of restoration is for all people. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Today's our first reading is Joel 2, verse 28, 32. The day of the Lord. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens on and on earth, blood and fire and blow smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and the dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. The second reading, Acts 2, verse 1 to 11. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seems to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, are it all these who are speaking Galileans? Then now, is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Peritians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Curtains, and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonder of God in our own tanks. This is the word of God. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. A man was seen running out of the operating room and dashing down the hallway. And uh, a nurse stopped him and said, 
what's going on? So he turned around and he said, I heard the nurse say, it's a very simple operation, don't worry. I'm sure you will be all right. So the nurse said, but, you know, it's just to reassure you so that uh, you feel okay. He said, the nurse wasn't speaking to me, she was speaking to the surgeon. <laughs> What would the results be if you were filled with the Holy Spirit today? What do you think the result would be in your life and mine? The early disciples were transformed by it. What happened? We heard from Joel, I will pour out my spirit on all people. I will pour out my spirit on all people. And the disciples after Jesus' resurrection, they had been wandering all over the place and then they came to that those last 10 days, just after the ascension, when Jesus said to them, Go and spend some time in prayer. And they spent 10 days praying for the Spirit. Praying, I'm sure, because they were schooled in the Old Testament and they were probably looking at these words that the Spirit would be poured out on all people, including them. And they, they waited on the Lord. And then suddenly the Spirit came upon them where they were gathering. Now there were two significant things that happened in that place where they were meeting. The first thing is they saw something visible. They saw these tongues of fire settling on them. I mean, I can't imagine that in my mind how and how that worked, but that's what they saw in that moment. Now, for them, fire meant the presence of God. Do you remember in the Old Testament when Moses met with God? It was the burning bush. And the fire was a representation to them of the Spirit of God. Then they heard something. There was what it says, a, 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 the sound of a rushing wind. And this wind filled this place where they were. And you know what it feels like when you have your windows open and you have this rushing wind coming through. You can actually feel it, you can sense it, and you can see it's making a difference in that room. But there were other manifestations as well that day. They, 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 they spoke in languages. And it wasn't a babbling. It was, it says their known languages, spoke in their native languages. I don't think, I think Luke is trying to make a point here. This, these languages were real. They could hear, the Greeks could hear Greek. And the Jews could hear the Hebrew and so forth. All those Cappadonia and all those folks who were there, they all heard it in their own tongue. There was a boldness. They spoke boldness of God's love. And they were praising, telling of all the things that had happened. That was a transformation that took place in the lives of the disciples. So what I want to do is I want to look at three things today. Three things. And the first is that it transformed their timidity. They were no longer afraid. They were no longer afraid. They had been given a new boldness. Some people say that there is an eleventh commandment. Do you know what that eleventh commandment is? Thou shalt not talk about two things. Religion and politics. <laughs> the reason is uh, because it always causes family feuds. The disciples went out and they shared vitally their experience that they had of Jesus. And they must have spoken about his word and they proclaimed his word wherever they went. And there are of course various ways that we can, can, can speak and, 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 and share and, and, and help and care. Different gifts, people are given different gifts when they are filled. And, and we need to lose that timidity. They were transformed 
in their timidity, were bold. A lady was speaking on TV a while ago, and she was saying that she confronted her headmaster of the, of the school because of the material that her son was coming home with. And she was trying to say to parents, do you, do you look at the material that your children come home with from school? And when she, when she went through this material, she realized this is, this is not acceptable. This is what she felt. She said it's unacceptable material. And so she went and she challenged the headmaster and challenged the school board on this. And it is amazing, she said, that uh, the, the school board took it seriously and they made changes. But she said she had, it, it took courage for her to do that. That's one way somebody has done it, you know. Uh, the, someone who, who, who can go out and say, I don't agree with what's going on there. I need to do something about it. When I was in one of my previous churches, there was a, a, a radio announcer in my congregation. And uh, we often had conversations. And one, one day I asked him, why do you allow such, such uh, uh, unacceptable uh, uh, lyrics? Why do you actually play these things over the radio? You know, uh, It's undesirable. And he responded saying that they get hundreds of requests for the songs they play. Hundreds. They never receive letters of objection. And he said in one case that he remembers since he's been announcing there, two letters were received from people, from their listeners, that objected to a particular song. And he said in the board, removed that, that, that song from the radio. They never played it again. Because two people had objected. But he says we get hundreds of people asking for those undesirable songs. And so they're gonna, they've got to please their, their listeners, as it were. Do you know how many chaplains in Australia are under fire by atheists wanting chaplains to be removed from, church, uh, from schools? I had, I had to deal with one myself in, while I've been in Australia. Yeah? They wanted to pack up because of the, of the, of the nonsense she was receiving from the, from, the, from the people in the community. One has, to, one has to stand up, one has to be bold in those situations. And I believe th this is a way that we can be used. Look at, notice what it says in, 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 in Acts there. He says, when they, the Sanhedrin, saw, saw, the courage of Peter and John, they realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men. They were astonished and took note that these men had been with Jesus. And so the question that I asked myself here, in what ways can we share our faith? Now remember that all of us sitting here are all different. There are some people who can, who can write a letter of objection to the newspaper. We haven't all got that gift. Some of us have got other gifts. In our situation, because we are unique, everyone's got a different skill set. And the question that I ask myself, and I want you to ask yourself, how can I share my faith that others will visibly see the work of Christ in my life and audibly hear what Christ is doing in society today? That's a question you must live with. Ask yourself. Secondly, they uh, transformed their fear. Now remember, they were gathered behind locked doors. They had seen Jesus arrested. They had seen him crucified. And so they, reckon, they, they had it in the back of their minds. They're going to come after us now. They're going to come after his disciples. And so they locked themselves away in fear, absolute fear. After Pentecost... They spoke to the same people who crucified Jesus. And they spoke out boldly. Now, think for a moment of our own fears. What fears do you and I have at this moment? And I don't know about you, but sometimes the older you get, sometimes these fears are there. Don't think of you when you're old and grey that you've got no fears. Has anybody here not got any fears? No fears. Well done, John. No, I've heard what you said. 
We have got fears. <laughs> I was just going to say, gee, we've got a saint amongst us. <laughs> are there people that we are afraid of? Someone who has wounded you? Someone who has spoken against you? Mocked you? Never underestimate what God can do when you take the situation and you try to face it. Scripture clearly tells us, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. But by my spirit, says the Lord. There was a woman who was badly abused in her childhood. And she carried the shame and the guilt. It was a, a abuse by somebody in the family. And she carried this for years and years. And came to this place in her life where she confronted her faith because she said it needed to start within her and she had this, this experience of God and the spirit in her life and so she went and she confronted this person and together, together they were able to talk through it and together they found healing and for me that's a wonderful outcome it's not one person standing there and accusing another but finding a way to deal with it and to deal with it in such a way that both have been reconciled, both to God and to each other. And this is what happened in her life. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. So what are our fears? Is it fear of man or woman? Or fear of the future? Fear of, fear of death? I've met people that have feared a great fear for death. Great fear for the future, what's going to happen? Look at how the world's going. Fear to be mocked, maybe ridiculed, written off, belittled by what we believe. And as we walk with the Lord in the power of His Spirit, we encounter situations, fearful situations. And when we do, this is the time that you need to trust Him. That's what it's about. The Spirit of God, you've got to trust God. You've got to trust in Jesus. Never underestimate God's spirit when you talk to someone. When we face difficult issues. But do it sincerely and sensitively. These disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. That, they so, that so transformed them that bystanders who witnessed their transactions saw with their eyes a transforming new people with new boldness. Heard a transforming message. The power of God will transform our fears. Do you know which phrase Jesus used more than any other phrase? Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Trust in the Lord. And so with Pentecost, it transformed their fear. And then finally, finally, it transformed their prejudices. Pente Pentecost brought about a unity. It brought about a unity. Everyone understood the message in their own tongue. What more could there be? This tremendous unity. Even some of the enemies were struck by the transformation that they were moved to believe in Jesus. Pentecost enables us to deal with our schisms, especially the prejudice in our hearts. And you know, over the three years I've been with you, I've said it again and again and again. With Jesus in our lives and in the power of God, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring people together and we can accept our divisions, our prejudices. We can, we can work through them and able to deal with those divisions. You know, we are so good at dividing people, aren't we? So good of putting people into different places, like we, we separate Christians and Muslims. We separate the decent and the untouchable, conservative and, and, and progressive Christians, and straight and gay, and black and white, and addict and clean, and lay and clergy, and liberal and labor. Oh no, wait, I mustn't get into politics. <laughs> But the list, the list is endless. And we put fences up. We put fences up between them.
And that fence was taken down on the day of Pentecost. Instead of building fences, the people who turned to Jesus and had come into this experience in the power of the Holy Spirit started building bridges. Bridges. Finding people. Bringing them together. They had seen this in the life of Jesus who gave dignity to the untouchables, to the blind, to the leper and to the unclean of society. There, are, there is among the rabbinical sayings a question and it says, when does night end? When does night end? So the rabbi asked his students, how can we determine the hour of dawn when night ends and day begins? So one student put up his hand, he says, Sir, Rabbi, he says, when you can tell the difference between a dog and a sheep, then you know the light has come. The rabbi said, no, no. Another one said, is it not when you can distinguish between a fig tree and a grapevine? That's when daylight comes. So he said, no, 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 no. Well, what then, Rabbi? Tell us. So the rabbi answered, he says, it is when you can look into the face of human beings and you have enough light in you to recognize them as brothers and sisters. Until then, it is night and darkness is still within us. Profound, isn't it? You see, you cannot legislate unity. Try as you will. Unity comes from within. From anything in the heart. And when you recognize others as brothers and sisters, that's when the light has come into our lives. And so they saw a new unity in the people that were followers of the way, filled with God's Spirit. Now they saw the meeting in, in, in homes and reaching out to the needy and the caring for the community. And I mean, they saw such wonderful things happening that they said, I want in. I want to be part of this. Because they could see something. And they also heard the language of love being spoken. The language of love was passed on to others. So Jesus shared this with his disciples and he said, love one another as I've loved you. So you must love one another. That was his clear message. With Christ in our hearts and the Holy Spirit in our lives, we see with new eyes and we hear with a new language, which leads us to feel with deep emotions and respond with a sincere attitude towards others. So when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, He will transform our prejudices, our timidity and our fears. And this is not a once-off experience. It's something that you continually work towards. Because as you grow closer to God, closer to God, He deals more and more with these issues in our life. Now let me conclude. Can I tell you how I see it at the moment? I can say a lot of things now. I've only got one more week. You can't fire me anymore. (laughs) Let me put it as I feel it. Our society has become very timid and conditioned as far as Christianity is concerned. We go overboard not to offend anyone. With the result is we keep quiet as our best option. This has happened again and again in the history of the church. And then there's a new awakening, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And the church is back on track again. And you see it all through history. You see it all through history. Somewhere a start has to be made. And that has to start in the house of God. It starts here, where people gather to worship God, where people gather to hear God's word, where people gather to honor God, where people gather here because we love Him and we want to serve Him. It starts here. It was after Pentecost when the community saw a new quality of people and heard that message, that wonderful message, saw people live by this conviction, by what they were preaching. They heard the wonderful news of the Savior, heard a transforming message. 
And then they turned to the people and said, what must we do when they saw that? What must we do to receive Jesus? On that day, when he spoke at that festival we spoke about this last week, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And of course you're speaking about the Holy Spirit there. So, it begins in the house of God. It starts in the life of the believer who trusts God for the impossible. And like an ebony widening circles, it permeates the community as we see and as we hear the wonderful things God has done. So, do the community see God in what we do, in us, and how we live, and what we do? Do people hear the message of love of God from you and me, and from me to you, and together here? Do we speak the message of love? The disciples were open to God. They were praying, and they were filled. I close with this illustration. There was a young Salvation Army uh, a recruit. He had, he had just joined the army. He was so impressed with it. And he, want, he went back to just find out where uh, William Booth, who was the founder, to the church where he was converted. And he went into this church and they actually have a chair there, uh, or in the pew, they said, this is where... Uh, 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 William Booth sat the day he committed his life to Christ, the day he started that wonderful journey. And he said, he went and he sat in that, in that place and he prayed and he said, Lord, do it again. Do it again. Maybe today you want to say that as you think of Pentecost. Lord, do it again in me. It starts in you and me and permeates to the community. Allow the wind of God to blow anew through our lives and church today. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, you poured your Spirit upon the gathered disciples creating bold tongues open ears and a new community of faith help us to listen for your word of grace to speak the good news of your love and to live as a people made one in Christ Lord, our prayer today is transform our timid lives by the power of your Spirit and fill us with the flaming desire to be your faithful people, doing your will for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear this prayer, for we ask it in your precious name. Amen. 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 Let us come before God with our prayers for the world and for ourselves. Loving God, we ask this day for the gift of your Holy Spirit, that we might pray as we ought. We pray for the energy and vision of your spirit. For those who are tiring in the battle against injustice and oppression. For those exhausted by the struggle with poverty and hunger. Holy Spirit, Help us. We ask for the hope and comfort of your spirit. For those whose lives are overshadowed by illness or pain. 
for those whose lives are darkened by sorrow or bereavement. Holy Spirit, help us. We ask for the peace and joy of your spirit, for those living in the shadows of war and violence, those who are consumed by guilt and anxiety, whose Christian life has become hard and dry. Holy Spirit, help us. We ask for the guidance and strength of your Spirit for those uncertain how to use their time, talents and gifts. We ask for the love and courage of your spirit for those reaching out to comfort the distressed and for those reaching out to others with the good news of Christ. So this day we ask for the assurance of your spirit to know your presence with us in our daily lives. The assurance of your spirit in our relationships, in our work and service, in our worship, in our times of joy and pain. May the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit be our goal and our strength, now and always. Amen. 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 And we pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. First of all, with a thanksgiving, we thank you, Lord, that we still live in a land bountifully able to supply all our needs. A land which still, by your providence, knows peace, whose skies are not darkened by the machines of the enemy whose fields and forests are still free from the flames of war, a land with peaceful valleys and smiling meadows still serene. Help us, Lord, to appreciate all that we have, to be content with it and to be grateful for it. Today we offer you our gifts, O Lord, for the work of your church and the welfare of your people, acknowledging with gratitude that we could give nothing if you had not first given to us. Help us to use all we have in accordance with your goodwill and for your glory and to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now a blessing. May the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life he gives. May the Spirit who touched the lives of those early followers and empowered them, make you joyful in the service of the Lord. And may the Spirit, who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost, bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Go in peace. God go with you.